Now, why science fiction? Why would we choose to focus on that genre? Is it because it's so much cooler than all the other genres? Well, that's true, but that's not the only reason why. Actually, we focus on two things here, science fiction and graphic novels. Now, these are not seen as literary genres. They're seen as commercial genres primarily. And for most people, I suppose that's why. But even in an age when Watchmen, the science fiction uh, graphic novel, can end up on Time's list of the 100 greatest novels of all time, they still don't get the respect that they deserve, even from the people who use their genres. A lot of authors and, uh, and other people who work within the genre will want to market themselves as straight fiction. They stay away from the sci-fi genre. Even the sci-fi channel itself has been distancing themselves. I want to read this to make sure I get it right. The head of the sci-fi uh, network said, we spent a lot of time in the 90s trying to distance the network from science fiction. You're the sci-fi network. Why would you want to distance yourself from science fiction? If you want to distance yourself from it, go work somewhere else. Work for ABC or something. It says that sci-fi has been associated with geeks and dysfunctional antisocial boys in their basements. I'm not in a basement, and you know, though I am a geek in certain ways, I really don't consider myself to be quite that dysfunctional. It's not quite the point, though. The point is, science fiction has a host of different types of fans. You've got Academy Award winners, uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, even a few Nobel laureates who are fans of the genre and who work within it. There are are examples of science fiction found in every literary genre out there. Romance, historical fiction, westerns, mysteries, comedy, drama, uh, action adventure, everything out there. You can include just a little bit of sci-fi in it, a little bit of the fantastic. Now, some people say that this is a bit of a cop-out, that this is, you know, just their way to try and spice things up and draw in more readers. That doesn't change the fact that you can have a really great literary work that is done within the sci-fi genre. Now, comics, uh, like I said, are in the same position. When it comes to the extra effort involved to create a whole new world, a world that has new technology or magic, if the, if you will. Anything that requires that much extra effort to make it believable, to bring the world into focus for the readers, to take them on a journey where they don't even question the existence of all this fantastical technology. That is why we focus on sci-fi. Because it can be romantic, it can be dramatic, it can be comedic, but in addition to all of those things, it takes that extra effort, it goes that extra mile or that extra light year, and it creates an entire new world, in some cases an entire new galaxy or an entire new universe in which to tell its story. And that's why sci-fi should, you know, not be associated with just a bunch of dysfunctional antisocial boys. There are plenty of men and women in all, uh, in all walks of life who not only enjoy this type of work, but who use it. You've got some of the greatest and most successful people out there who work within this genre, and who work within comic literature as well. Artists and authors, all types of people who, who go that extra mile 
to try and create something just a little more magical for their readers and their viewers and their listeners. There are sites that had focused on solely sci-fi or comic literature in the past who choose to branch out, and that's their decision. We won't debate that. But at Fourth Day Universe, we're going to focus just on those two because I don't really feel that it's necessary to abandon them in order to reach out into other genres, into other uh, types of movies and books and television shows. Because you can do that and not leave sci-fi behind.